All right. Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to the July 25th public forum um, on the Howe Street Landfill. Uh, my name is Michael Herbert. I'm the town manager here. Um, originally, this was intended as a uh, Board of Health meeting, um, but unfortunately, the Board of Health uh, was not able to meet tonight. So knowing the importance of this subject matter to, uh, to abutters and other residents in the town, we, we thought it would be good to go ahead and continue and do it just as a public forum um, under the, uh, the banner of the town of Ashland. Uh, with me up here, I have uh, a few guests. We have Joanne O'Leary from Eversource. Uh, Jim Daler from Amoresco. Again, I'm Michael Herbert. I'm the town manager here. Mark Oram, our Board of Health agent. Uh, we also have John Featherston and Mary Mortensen from our Board of Health. And our intern, uh, in our health, St Stephen, uh, in the health department. Um, what we wanted to do tonight was really just kind of talk about the landfill project in general, uh, talk about the status of the project. Uh, those of you that have been following this project know that it um, has, uh, for lack of a better term, stalled. Um, give you an update on the progress of that and also give you a prognosis and just give you a description and, and an idea of what's going to happen in the near future with regards to the um, Howe Street landfill. Just to talk a little bit about the history about the project, what we'll do is I'll just go through and give just a general overview of the situation, and uh, then maybe we can uh, take questions. Is Those of you that have been following this project know back in 2015, the uh, Ashland Town Meeting changed the zoning to allow solar, uh, solar project happen on the landfill. Um, at that time, we had entered into an agreement with Amoresco. Um, we spent the rest of 2015 uh, finalizing that agreement with Amoresco. Uh, Amoresco had moved forward um, with uh, preparing a post-closure use permit uh, to submit to DEP uh, that would allow the solar project to go forward and actually received permission from DEP in April uh, to move forward with the project. Um, also uh, in April, April 14th exactly, as part of a predetermined um, decree from DEP, we were required to put in a, a deeper monitoring wells um, at the Howe Street landfill that monitored gas, gas monitoring wells, right? right. Um, they went from, I believe it was roughly five feet on average to 20 feet, I believe it was. As deep as they could go. As deep as, yeah, uh, 20 feet. As deep as they could go before they, they met refuge. Um, and so also as part of the post-closure use process, uh, DEP required us to do quarterly uh, monitoring. I believe before that they were doing semi-annual. And then and that, if I may, that is for the, uh, we were doing quarterly monitoring for the gas and that was until we discovered the levels that we found last May and now we're monthly. So we check the gas monthly, the gas so, levels. So back in, in April, uh, 29th of 2016, um, ECS or ATC, that's the, uh, the consultant that does our monitoring for us, um, they reported the detection of uh, landfill gas concentrations at the property, at the landfill property in excess of 25 percent of uh, what's known as the lower explosive limit. Um, on May 2nd of 2016, they conducted a second round of landfill testing and found that uh, concentrations were again detected above the LEL amounts. Um, specifically, this was around uh, the ground monitoring well three, which is, which is on map, yeah. but it's about dead center. If I may help uh, on that part, it's across. It's across it's from about um, right here. It's dead. It's, in it's the right middle. across from the Schaefer's. Yep, it's in the so. middle of uh, Pine Crest. So. And all. <laughs> I didn't want to say they, they houses. <laughs> so right across from 101 House Street. Yes. So, <laughs> um, and uh, so what happened after that? Well, if you so, want, I can help a little bit too, Mike. If you yeah, want. go ahead. Mike. Yeah, and so what, what happened was uh, DEP coordinated with our landfill consultant. Uh, I worked with a man named John Nazelski, and uh, we coordinated to notify the residents. Some of you may remember me hand delivering envelopes on the same day we had Green Up Ashland. Uh, in between it all, I went to your houses and hand-delivered letters to advise you that 
Uh, we had these levels and that DEP was coming out to check your homes as well as our consultant. So some of the residents here know the process that occurred. And thankfully, through the process of testing the residential homes, we found the levels to be very low and of no concern. And DEP actually noted in their final letter, based on those results, the indoor air sampling events, Mass DEP concluded there was no evidence that landfill gases were entering the homes of Howe Street during the sampling period. So at, after that, many of you saw wells going across the street from the landfill near your homes. And that was another precaution we took so that we can measure gas both on the landfill side of Howe Street as well as across the street. And those went in within a month of us testing your homes. So at that point, now we test all those monitor wells on a monthly basis. Okay. So as part of all of those test readings and test results, um, MassDEP issued what, or said that we needed to issue a corrective action design, um, which was uh, designed, that would be a design that would um, mitigate the gas migration that was coming out of the landfill. Um, and so what we've been doing is we've been working with DEP over really the last year to come up with that, um, come up with that solution. And what that solution is, is a series of 29 um, gas permeation wells uh, that are going along Howe Street. Um, these wells go down to at least 25, um, 25 feet below ground level. Um, right here is a... Uh, an illustration of what the wells look like. Uh, so you have the well itself right here. This is, just for reference sake, this is Howe Street. This is the berm um, that's part of the solar project. This is the well um, that I was referring to. What that does is that vents out here and vents out behind um, to this stack. Um, like I said, there's gonna be a series of 29 of those along the Howe Street, uh, Howe Street line. Um, what we've done is, is we have worked with, um, we, we issued a um, RFP uh, to do that construction. Uh, we awarded that earlier this year, uh, within the last month, and they actually are going to start work um, in August, specifically August 10th. So they're going to work on the, um, the gas migration wells or gas mitigation wells. Um, after that's done, um, Amoresco can uh, begin their work as well or finish their work. But um, Amoresco has also been working over the last year with the planning board to come up with a solution, a final solution for their project. And Jim, I don't know if you just want to give an update on where things are with the planning board. Sure, absolutely, Michael. Thank you. Um, so many of you have been with us for a couple of years now as we've gone through the process. Uh, and maybe just for a quick sort of recap, uh, on some of the steps uh, that we've gone through. Um, I think it's, it was a, a good overview, Michael, to um, maybe start the discussion this evening to talk about the two separate projects that are really happening at the landfill. Uh, one is certainly relative to the venting gas uh, associated that was a pre-existing condition before we arrived, so that certainly the town's addressing that uh, in its own course. Uh, and then the second is activities related to the development of a solar uh, array, which is completely separate, uh, but we're coordinating those efforts uh, to be <coughs> on the same page together. So where we've been over the past couple years is there, prior to being selected and going through town meeting for approval, there was a little bit of a delay at the state level where the, the subsidies for projects like this uh, were shelled for a little bit, so we had to work with the state to get those uh, uh, back in place, which sort of uh, put a little bit of a delay uh, on the project, on the overall process. Following that resolution, we worked pretty closely with the Board of Health uh, and the Planning Board to come up with an adequate solution, both for the layout of the solar array, uh, as well as the type of uh, permanent interconnection solution. And by interconnection, the way we transmit the electricity from the solar array and take that to the grid. So how do we move that electricity from one, the generation source to the distribution source? And so um, the Board of Health wanted to uh, seek alternative solutions and we were open to that idea. Uh, normally we would use a couple on-site utility poles to connect into the, the system. We wanted to be uh, cognizant of working on a uh, landfill situation so we explored some above ground uh, 
uh, solutions. Um, and at the end, after that process played out, uh, all parties felt as though, uh, if possible, uh, working with one of the abutting properties uh, where there's not a landfill issue, uh, using uh, an abutting property to connect the project would be a, a viable solution and that would work for everyone. We have since uh, found such a solution and now that we have that solution in place, we are working pretty closely with Eversource to make sure that that piece of interconnection is appropriately designed and then appropriately installed. Uh, that process should play out this summer uh, and then with that interconnection, uh, Eversource can go forward and they would be the installer of that interconnection activity and the owner of that interconnection activity when it leaves our solar array and goes to their system so that they can then commence with their activities and then on a parallel track we would commence with our construction activities uh, to complete the berm, install permanent fencing uh, and to coordinate with their, the environmental consultant uh, on the, the venting activities. Uh, so that process should play out uh, the balance of this summer and in, into the early fall. All right. And just because I know it's on everybody's mind, Jim, when do you think you're going to be able to start f or finish construction of the berm and the plant? <laughs> absolutely. So that's something. Year and next year. No, we absolutely <coughs> we want to do this year. So that uh, we. That's something we would like to do this year. And, um, and so we, we'd like to do that prior to the fall and winter season coming in. Um, We have, we have a design using an off-site property to connect into the Howe Street utility lines. The budding property that we're working with is the, the Boy Scout property to use about 500 square feet of their property, about a little tiny corner of their property along Howe Street. Jim, if I, if I may before then, it, just for a point of a fact, because I had a discussion with someone uh, we don't call it the Boy Scout property. Why? It's called Big Indian Reservation, Big Indian just Reservation. to keep the yep. association yep. separate. Yep. Uh, just, uh, just no, not yeah. I don't know what when you refer to way down the back. I don't know what way. To, oh, they get. Oh, yeah, we got to do the mic. Yeah. Uh, just a point of information. Uh, cable is asked. They can't hear your questions, so you're going to need to come up and. Well, if, if you want to say it, and, and I can repeat the question. And direct so it Michael, to if the I could just see your pointer just for one second, I'm sorry. Yeah. So um, if I could see it from here, that little, essentially the entire area, that little green dot along Howe Street at that corner of the property is leaving the array, going right there, that, that little mini triangle of the Big Indian Reservation right there along Howe Street. Okay. Nick, you had a question? Uh, No, no, so, the, so that's it's a very good so, question. So, so the question is, is it going to be directly in front of the house? Four apartments for the last year, and now you're going to break a chain that's going to be pulled in front of the house. Uh, it's even worse. Um, this, it has to be where it's zoned, where we zoned it for solar. If you go off the path, you can't go onto another property because it's the, we only zoned the path. You're going to have to change the zoning and it'll be smart zone. You can, uh, see, we just make up rules and it's just make up if it's not on the cap, you can't do it. You can't put it on private property. We're not yeah, citing a solar array. Yeah, the solar private array property. is not going to be on the private That's property. The whole, it's all part of the whole. You can't say, oh, this isn't part of it. You put it over here. Come on, please. Can we have some honesty here? It's got to be where we where it was on the town meeting. And I'd like to know where all those people are that voted to send it if they want to. Where are those people? Yeah, you're going to have to figure out how to do this on private. So, Nick, your, your question, does it have to go before town meeting for a vote? No, it doesn't. It has to go back to, it has to go back to the planning board for, I believe, their approval. Is that correct? Uh, well, that, that would be a question for Eversource. It's, uh, it's the Eversource uh, uh, transmission line. So, so um, we have the responsibility of looking at the plan that is offered by our customer, who in this case is MRSCO, working for the town, 
and it's um, th we have a group called the Interconnection Group for these solar arrays that are happening um, in many communities like Ashland. So we have a team that takes the customer request, we then get their design, and we have to work it through our engineering and operations to make sure that it fits with the distribution system and the reliability that we have currently with all of our customers. Um, which is really all of you in this room. So that plan was received, the revised plan, I believe just um, after July 4th, maybe July 11th it was received, and that still has to go through review. So that's where I'm currently at, and I'm the community relations specialist, so I'm not um, detailed into this um, information, but I will certainly take any questions back. So anyhow, at this point, it needs to be reviewed and approved before we will um, proceed. Okay. I think, Nick, to your point, what you were talking about is when the planning board in initially approved this, they took the town meeting. The drawings were all hunky dory, nice pictures. There was no telephone poles shown. People voted on one thing, and now we're being handed another. We're actually being rammed down our throats. Another thing. Again. Again. I'm very upset that you know it's come to this. I had to come here today to find out that it's going to be in front of my house. And it can't be. It's got to be on the cap because that's what we zoned. Just so everyone's clear, it's got to be on the cap. Well, I, I don't know if that's true, Julie. It is true. I don't know if it's true. Well, it is true. So okay, well, I disagree. We, of course Does you it? disagree, but it's true. Mm -hmm. we gotta, we got to follow the zone in this town. We have a real issue with that. I have one more question. Who negotiated with the big Indian group? Okay, the question is who negotiated yeah, with who, the big Indian group? The town. And I believe that's it. Not Which the town. Involved? Dan Maresco posed the question. We were directed by the town. Yeah. Nick, by the town. Just please. Okay. Nick, just as part of this question, one of your comments was we thought there was going to be an above ground solution. Correct. We developed an above ground solution. We presented that to the Board of Health. We presented that to the Planning Board. We presented that to Eversource. Those bodies chose not to go with that solution. So, that took us to going from an on-site utility pole solution, which was presented as part of the overall project at town meeting, to then developing an on-site solution in a mounted system, which was turned down by those three parties, which now has forced us to look to an off-site solution. I understand the process. I, well, I, I just like it. I, I'm aware. But when you say, I thought we had a, I just want to give you the, the background on how we arrived at this place. Yeah, I just feel like I'm getting slapped in the face. You know. Okay, so it was suggested that the, the board members of the Big Indian Reservation would be open to hearing our request. We presented our request to the, that board. We showed them the small land area that would be required to locate poles and wires to get out to Howe Street. Uh, they were open and amenable to that and ask us that, that we go forward and if it's approved by the, the utility then they would enter into an easement agreement with the utility to allow for that transmission. Um, again, my question wasn't answered. Who suggested it? Was it some, which, who suggested you contact the Well, Well, we're very, we knew that the, the solution had to be an off-site solution, okay? We meet with the town and town representatives on a regular basis, okay? It's very clear in our research who the two, the two immediate abutters are. We, we, Open up lines of communi communication with each abutter. The uh, most viable solution was working with the folks at the Big Indian Reservation to use a, the, the least invasive uh, piece of property, uh, and that that's how we arrived at that at that it, that conversation with those folks and that solution. I'm curious. Did you just call them up on the phone out of the blue, or did someone call before? I, I just. It just seems weird to me because isn't, isn't that federal land or what is it? Did you reach out to them directly, Jim? I reached out to them directly. That, uh, that and they said, okay. As part of the, the, the property survey that we did as part of this property, yeah. we had to identify the abutters. The abutters also were notified. We have a certified abutters list for any filing we ever had, so we have all that contact information. So I have that contact information. I reached out to the chairman of the Big Indian Reservation Board uh, and, and posed our question. You said the most viable, so is it the only viable? Is that the only choice instead of putting it? I mean, I'm on the front, too. Unfortunately, it's not down my hands that, but I, I get it, because you know, I'm on the front, too. Is there another, what's, what are the other options that are viable? 
You didn't say that was exclusively the only. Yeah, it is. Butter. The other butter. You said it was the most the other butter. The other butter said no. So. How horrible for him. I'm sorry. The town board said yes. As any board, I haven't seen a single agenda talking about this in any town board. I haven't seen it in the conservation commission. I haven't seen it in planning or zoning. It doesn't require conservation action. There's, there's, it's not in a buffer zone. There's not. It, there's no conservation action required. It's, it's, right, it's it, down by the water. It's right next to a water resource. Yeah, it's it, down by the water. It's, it's outside the limits of the wetland buffer zone. According to who? Yeah. According to your conservation commission, that it, that actually approved the the flagging that was done as part of this overall project, so oh. that we've cited it outside the conservation. When commission. So when was that filed with yeah. conservation? I haven't seen that on their agenda. I've been following this. Yeah. So that, that's well over a year ago that we got conservation. We we Not got a, a request for determination of applicability from the conservation commission. They issued that well over a year ago for this project. For that other project. Yeah, it's new. It's it new. doesn't require action from that board. Does it? You've changed it. You've expanded the footprint. We haven't expanded the footprint. You're on a butter property. Yeah. How could Please. you not have expanded the footprint? <sighs> You're on a budding property. You're not even on the same piece of property. It's residential. Yeah, it's the wrong zone. Uh, listen, this is, we're not citing a solar array on that property. It's part of the it's project. Part of the yeah, you're, you're in, a, you're, in a, 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 you're in a tough situation here because we oh, it was only zoned in town meeting for the cap. Now you want it because you can't do it on the cap. Now you want to put it over here. Well, you, I'm sorry, but you can't. Can't. can't figure it out. That's that's not the case, sir. That is not the case. You can't. There's a, we have a, a town integrity issue here. We zoned the cap. Period. Are you putting a, Are you putting any kind of solar photovoltaic array on the Big Indian land? Amoresco is doing nothing on the Big Indian land. What's occurring is the interconnection that will be utility-owned assets are going to be located on the Big Indian Reservation to transmit the electricity from the solar the solar farm. Okay. okay. So when it leaves the con the okay. Well, then you don't need it. Then you don't even need it. If it's not part of the solar farm, you don't need it, and you don't have to put it over there, right? Because if Michael says it's not part of the solar farm then you don't need it. When the electrons leave the inverter, they become utility-owned electrons. And when all our assets are located on the solar, on the landfill, it's the interconnection to be able to transmit those electrons to the grid to provide economic and environmental benefit to Ashland. How tall are the telephone poles? Say again? How tall are the telephone poles? How tall are the telephone poles? I mean, Chris, I think they're, it, they'd be, they'd be, oh, go ahead. No, I was going to say that um, the approval by Eversource, there has to be a field um, visit, and we have to make sure that it is, in fact, with our standards and safety. Which has occurred. So how much of it has Generally, Joanne, how, how, how are they? Uh, uh, for the interconnections, I would be guessing. I mean, a typical um, utility pole is um, anywhere just between, um, I'd say, 35 to 50 feet. How many are there? Is it just one? How many, how many will there be? There'll be between two and four, depending on the solution that's uh, desired by every source. Can I ask, what is the current estimate? Like, can you give me a date when all of this will be accomplished? Because the, this neighborhood's been living with this evolving project for years. We were sold at town meeting on a particular aesthetic of the way this project was going to look. The screening on my side, which is the Indian Hill side, is, doesn't cover the panels. The screening on the House Street side is non-existent. There are piles of gravel that have been there so long that there are weeds, like forests of weeds, growing out of them. So I would like to know, for people who are thinking about selling their houses or, you know, the next 10 years of their lives, when is the date that this will be settled? Well, uh, the first part is to, to work with Eversource to get through the interconnection process. As I mentioned earlier, that's going to play out this summer uh, and into the fall. And our intention is to have this project connected to the utility grid and have the berm finished, planted with permanent screening fencing done by this fall. By this fall. That's, this, that's our plan. That's what you said last year. 
Yep, that's, that's the main way. If I yeah. Okay. But just, just so everyone knows, I think, you know, there is some confusion on, and I'd like to answer to Paul's question on, they thought it'd be done last year. The gas permeation occurred in May, stopping everything. That took full, DEP took over this project and said nothing's happening until we resolve the gas permeation. So that's why the berm wasn't finished. The berm heads now get to be opened up to put the pipes through. So it unfortunately happened, and that's what caused the delay on that. I don't want, I don't think in any way anyone here delayed the project. It's just the fact that gas was detected, I and that's a safe. If I can finish, please, that. and that's a safety issue. Safety takes over all, and DEP orders. They don't say do it when you want to. So we were under their directive administrative order to correct. Did that have and to be done after the panels went up or could that have been done the, before no, the panels went up? These are separate issues. So this is yeah, a separate, these are completely separate, separate issues. That's, so the, that's, this, that's, the evidence of gas occurring has nothing to do with the installation of a solar array. So I want to be clear on that. No, I know. I said, did we not know about this before the solar the right. panels were put over there is what I'm asking. We did. We did. So and that, the reason that, you wouldn't do that first before you did this so we got held up like this and looked at that? Burn was in place. So yeah, they, they had started constructing the burn, but then they didn't start detecting the elevated gas levels until April of 2016, April of May of 2016. That's why. Derek. Yeah. I assume, why can't the burn be done before this thing gets connected? Once the wells are in, why why is it we're gonna connect it first and then we're gonna do the burn? Now we seem to have an issue here with how that we're gonna connect this thing. But why should that hold up what we have to look at every day once that the wells are put in and the gas situation? Because so you could totally get rid of that solar farm, have those wells, put the berm in, and you have a nice deal with the thing without the solar panels. But why make the solar panels connection be done before we put the berm in and get the trees planted? You know, why, why can't we do the berm right. as soon as the wells yeah. are done? Because all parties need a, a, a vehicle to monetize this project and that vehicle is the interconnection so without the interconnection to transmit the electrons to the utility the what, what does that have to do with the what, 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 <laughs> you asked a question and I'm answering your question I don't know what monetize means so if you can explain in English to me so I can understand to be able to provide the economic and environmental benefits of the town of Ashland we need to be able to sell the electrons to the utility I get that part but what you and saying? so if so when the interconnection was in flux we put the project on hold until that issue was resolved. So from us, that was the appropriate business decision to make. At the same time, working with their consultants, putting two physical structures in the same location, we're working around their schedule and their construction activities. We understand that, but I guess I don't understand how a berm and trees has anything to do with the rest of what you're doing. Sure, okay, so. Maybe a small section of it, wherever the pool's going. So I'll, so I'll speak to, again, maybe some of my earlier comments of the year-long process that we've gone through with each of your agencies to explore their desired solutions of on-site and above ground and all the different solutions. So <coughs> that has taken quite a while to have that process play out. And without knowing what that solution was gonna be, it would be inappropriate to go forward and, and construct the last piece of, of the puzzle. I, so you know what you're doing, but he's asking moving forward now, though. Since you know what you're doing, why can't you? I think what so he's saying is, is is we're not going to do it until they start making money out of this thing. I Sorry. think that's pretty, what you're saying, pretty much. As a business, you're not going to put any more money into this thing until you start making money out of it. Derek, there are two things. One, we need to make sure there's a, a, a clear regulatory path forward to be able to make this a, a good, productive project for Ashley. And secondly, we need to stay out of their way over the next few weeks until they get their work done. Uh, well, I, I, I understand that, but what I'm saying is once their work is done, why can't the berm and the trees be planted whether or not you have it connected or not? That's what I'm trying to say. And you're saying, well, it's, we got to connect first before we're going to do that. So that's, that's correct. And, but I don't, I, haven't, I don't think anybody's got a real clear answer of why that is. That you wouldn't do that until you get connected. You almost wouldn't care what was happening behind the scenes if he did that. You don't live across from it every single day. Yeah. You cannot understand plus it the unless other, you're there. Plus the other thing, you guys never knocked on a door to look at a property inside the house to see 
that's what he sold us from the get go. That's why everybody's pissed off at you guys. We have rendering. We have. We. Uh, I'm sorry, Paul. It's Paul, right? Yes. I know you've spoken to a number of our people on site. We may not have visited your house, but we visited a number of your brothers, and we've actually invested and done renderings from from various floors of the house to to show them what it would look like in the future. Is there a new rendering from my house with telephone poles? I can see it. <laughs> no, there's not. So, but to answer your question, to your point of you never knocked on our doors, that's a false statement. Can I, can I ask a question? Uh, I'm John Featherston. I am a member of the Board of Health, but I'm not representing the Board of Health tonight. But I've been actively involved in this landfill project for probably 12 years. And I kind of do have to challenge you on your statement that you've been working with boards for the last year on this. You came to the Board of Health the week before Maytown meeting. You had two young men, and I don't remember their names. Uh, they represented your company, and they represented your company very well, and said to us, but well, you guys have to approve this so it can go to town meeting. Members of the board weren't aware that there was even an issue. We were presented with it. We made a call. We made the call. The selectmen own the first 12 inches of the cap, and the Board of Health is, is responsible for anything other than that. We said that we wouldn't allow a telephone pole to breach that more than 12 inches, with the caveat that the plan would, that if there was another plan, and we tried to even offer suggestions, and members of the Board of Health actually did mention uh, the Indian Reservation as a, as a thing. We were under the impression that you guys were going to come back to us with this presentation when you came up with the solution. So when I'm sitting here tonight as a member of the Board of Health not representing the Board of Health, I'm sitting there going, what? This is the first I've heard of it. So how, how could you have negotiated a, an agreement and not not done your due diligence and come back to us. Okay, first of all, we have a negotiated agreement. Well, it oh. sounds like you did. Yeah. So you, so you, okay. So I understand you stated that you're not representing the board. I'm not. But, no. So you, so you must admit, and we can certainly show that we've appeared more than just a couple months ago at the board of health, and there, are, and certainly the conservation commission, yeah, I, I'm not the on planning board. I, I get when you said, but when you make the statement of you say you appeared in front of boards. We've appeared in front of many boards with this town, working closely with the planning agency as well. So, But the Board of Health was the one that knocked out the telephone pole. Is that a factual statement? Correct. As well and as we made the caveat that you would come back to us and present us with another plan. And I'm not saying that your plan's not viable, but you didn't do that. We don't have to come back to you at this stage. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Until they approve a plan, we don't have to appear back in front of your board. So as you shake your head no, the process is still playing out where Eversource needs to approve the design and they, Eversource, are the ones that need to appear in front of the board as it is their asset. So I understand that and I understand that you're in a business of making money and you're in a good spot. But you're in our town and we want good neighbors in our town. And your mannerisms tonight to me aren't speaking a good neighbor. They're not. I understand you're in a business and that's your job to do it, to run it as a business. And I totally support that. But it go, kind of goes back to what you, what your mother said. It's not what you said, but how you're saying it. You know, you've got a room here of people that are angry, and they're justifiably angry, and they might there might be a solution. But you're just coming saying, well, this is what we're doing. There's not a conversation. Let's have a conversation. That's all I'm saying. You know, like, is there another solution that would make everybody happy? You make money, and they don't get a pole in their front. We've explored all the solutions. Mounted on site. You can review all the transcripts from the planning board if you wish. We're exploring off-site with various neighbors. So if you have a different solution that you'd like to propose, we're open to it. But at the moment, that the planning board and others have suggested that this is the route to go for the interconnection. So, did you have a question? Um, I guess my question was more for the audience. Is that I don't know how appropriate that is, but I'm just wondering, like. Um, I'm not in the direct neighborhood, I live a neighborhood over, but I'm just wondering why sort of like the aesthetics are more important than having clean renewable energy in our town. I think our state has renewable energy goals for 2030 and it would be really important to have this in our town. And every time I drive by it, I'm like, oh, I hope that's turned on by now and it's not, but it seems like the, the company is doing everything they can do to get the project in place. So I'm just wondering 
similarly if there's some sort of compromise here? Because I think the project's really important. Do you live in Trump? Where do you live? Yeah, where do you live? I live over by Thomas. Oh, yeah. <laughs> just one thing is, all these problems we're talking about here wouldn't be happening if they didn't put it in the middle of the neighborhood, number one. You could have that reliable source of energy, the, the alternative source of energy, in a different spot without these problems. But they put it in the middle of a neighborhood, so now you've got the gas issues, you've got poles, where they're going to put this thing, and it's on a landfill, so they can't put poles and they can't put um, this interconnection on there. So now they're going looking for other places to put it on other people's property. This stuff should have been done way before they even got approval from the planning board. Right. These to be approved, how are you going to connect the thing? So it seems like this is what we're upset about. We all love solar here. There's not, there's, that's not a thing. It's just you have, you put things you put these kind of places, this, uh, um, these arrays, in places that um, shouldn't affect your neighborhood. But, you know, most of them are done in commercial areas, and nobody has a complaint about them. So, can, I finish, can I finish my point? Like I said, I'm not trying to be argumentative. Let's hypothetically say Eversource mm -hmm. says the Indian Reservation is not a viable option. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But you made the statement tonight that the, the hope would be that we, this would be done by the fall. If Eversource says that's not, are you still willing to stick to that statement that this will be done by the fall? That's okay. our plan. We have a viable plan that meets their standards in front. Okay, It's, right. it's, out, it's outside the jurisdictions of folks that mentioned the Conservation Commitment. It, it's a viable plan. Okay, Our intention is to, to make, we have a, a willing landowner, we've got a willing utility, um, you know, and this is a viable path forward. And, and I understand that from a business standpoint. But my intention when I bought a Powerball ticket last week was to win. Okay, um, so I, I understand the situation that you're in. But these people, I think, came tonight with a good solution. Finish the berm now. Everything else will take care of itself. But you're saying that you can't do that until you hook up because it's all about money, right? No, I didn't say it was all about money at all. What I'm saying is, is it that, that we have made an investment. Okay, and without that intimate connection, that investment is at risk. Right. We're, we're certainly happy to, we made many good faith efforts to explore numerous solutions. I would agree with that. You know, um, and so at the town's direction to explore alternative solutions, both on-site and off-site, we've made those investments on our own. That's not affecting the benefit to the town at all. But if this but doesn't when, work out, then. Is there is there a plan B? If the Eversource connection on the Indian Reservation doesn't work out, is there a plan B? What, what what's you know there has what, to what be happens a contingency if, if, there, plan if that doesn't work if out. that doesn't work out? Well, we hope that all efforts are pulling in the same direction. I will say I, that. Well, I think and we've then, all thought that for the last four years on this project. Yes. 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 But so you know, what I'm hearing is there is no plan B. I have a related question because you said earlier that the interest right now is making sure this is a fiscally responsible, good choice for the town and that everyone will win. And so my question is, is there still, is there a chance that's not going to be the case? I mean, is there a chance this connection is not a viable plan and there is no viable plan? I mean, I, it sounds to me, reading between the lines, like that is still in the mix because otherwise, why would we not be constructing the firm? Well, this is a, well, it's a, we think it's a viable plan. So it's a straightforward, above ground, utility <coughs> interconnection using their design standards uh, for their equipment uh, and the siting of their poles. Okay, so from a technical perspective, we don't envision it meeting with any uh, challenges from the utilities perspective. Um, we've got a neighboring landowner that's willing to enter into uh, an easement agreement to facilitate this. And so uh, there shouldn't be, that those are the two challenges. One, the utility approves the design, and two, the, the landowner entered into the, uh, the easement agreement. Those and the planning board? Does the planning board have to approve? For the siting of a poll, that's, that's a town question that, that, that the utility will have to ask. Sure. 
What makes it not possible to have an underground? It seems like these people over here are complaining about poles, and I can see you know, there's a lot of poles, and you don't even know yeah. if it's two poles or four poles. Why can't you do underground? I know other towns have, have gone this same route, underground, above ground. Why can, well, can we not use that same piece of land and put an underground connection in there, no poles? Uh, Rob, two reasons. Uh, one is um, we only have uh, permission to use the top 12 inches of, of the landfill itself. Okay, that that was a requirement of this project that we we're adhering to. Uh, certainly the array does that. Uh, and then secondly, even when we came up with a mounded system, you know, proposing that we create a mound, site the um, mechanical equipment, the utilities mechanical equipment within, uh, within that mound, uh, they were concerned, uh, of, they, they? they the, being the utility rod, uh, that they were concerned that even on uh, a mounded system, that they would have some challenges because it didn't meet their specific design criteria. Um, so that that's the chambered approach using mechanical bolts uh, met pushback from the utility. How many times have you changed this plan since you broke ground about the berm and the big getting earth? How many times has this changed since un until what it is? What now. Has the plan changed? Well, the array has never changed. So the array was always cited generally in the same manner. Uh, what has changed is at the initial planning board approval, uh, it went from uh, a row, a linear row of arborvitaes that went to uh, a bermed approach. It went from a chain link fence approach to um, uh, some cedar in the back and then some black screen fence up front. So the planning board conditions that were proposed as part of this project have changed uh, as part of that. Um, and then the specific interconnection changes probably have uh, gone well past plan, plan B to five, six, or seven or eight iterations relative to um, uh, on-site poles, a mounted system, off-site, uh, connecting on either side of the property. So it's gone through you know, many iterations to, uh, you know, to, to come to completion. And the big Indy reservation is now going to have the, the poles, connections, stuff like that. How long, from original day one, did it take to get Eversource to come in to say this is what's going to happen? Well, they've been working alongside us uh, all the way. So that they've been working with the town, they've been working with uh, Amoresco uh, every step along the way. It's just every time, every time we come up with a, we have a request to come up with a new plan, the clock starts again at the utility, and so that we have to submit them a new plan. It has to go through their process, and then it has to play out. And what's exactly going to be placed on the ground at the beginning of the station? Once the poles are in, what's going to be there? That's physically so going to be That's seen. also my question. How are the wires going to be transferred from the center of the, um, the solar array where the uh, where is the transformer? The so it comes out of the uh, above ground conduit to a pickup pole uh, on the, as it crosses the property line, it'll, get, it'll uh, go to a pickup pole to go to the... Uh, the will it be covered and buried, or is it going to suck out like a sore thumb? Uh, it'll be out, it won't be below 12 inches and it'll be uh, in a conduit and covered. When you first got here in town, what was the uh, southern point? When you first got here in town, where you at? How, how were you introduced to the town through the committees? Amoresco was competitively selected as part of an MAPC procurement to develop energy efficient and renewable energy solutions for the town. And the town is taking a, a market value through your company and saying, this is how we would select you as a bid or as a source. It was done through a competitive procurement. Yeah. And so you're actually, and every source is, is going to be contracted through you or through the town or both? Well, they Aerosource has the commitment um, of serving customers. So they're a customer that comes to us with a request. And like any, whether it's a homeowner or a contractor, you have to meet our standards and we, it has to fit into our distribution. And those plans get reviewed by engineers who know how to make the connections. And uh, once they meet the approval and operation says it's something that they can do safely um, with their own um, you know, electrical standards and workers, then we, we, we make that approval happen. So that comes in a approval, but it comes through your offices, and you have a talk, round table talk over, and go over the details and say yes or no. We actually go out in the field and make a an field inspection. We have um, dedicated employees who have field experiences 
uh, that can look to see if, in fact, it's a viable source for us. And how did you cook on with Amoresco to, 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 to your side of things? Because um, Amoresco is our customer, and they put a request into our interconnection department, and uh, we treat them as a customer. And did Derek, that, did you have a question? Did that, well, I, got, I got the last one. Last one. Did Ashland get involved with Amoresco to get you to work on a Ashland town, town area? Did Ashland? It's all three parties. Um, yeah. So that the town is the host with the customer, and they're the utility. And so all three parties are working together on this project. And Thank so everyone has a role to play. Dear, did you have a question? I just want to, Mike, maybe you can explain to me why the berm can't be done before the it, it gets connected by uh, ever source. Because I can't seem to get, I can't seem to understand what what it is. I don't think anybody else can. But what what is the real what is the reason why we can't have that done before it gets connected? Um, I, from my standpoint, I don't see why there's a reason why. We well, can't that's what I'm trying to find out, but I can't seem to get but an it, answer. It does. It sounds like I mean. From Amoresco's standpoint, right. um, there's a financial there's a financial component to this, yeah. and the berm mm -hmm. costs money to install right. and yep. implement. And if they don't have that interconnection put in place where they're actually mm -hmm. generating revenue, mm -hmm. um, then they're not going to do the berm. That is that right. a fair? Is that well, we we're managing our investment, Derek. Okay, so that this this is a it's a step along the way. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so that the permanent the removal of the construction fencing. The removal of the construction fencing, the construction and planting of the berm is, are the final steps. And we need to make sure that from a, a business and investment perspective that, that all the boxes have been checked, that we have you know, clear and full permission to interconnect this system to the utility. What would okay. happen if you didn't? I, I don't think I've still heard plan B. So if you didn't, then what? you're going to remove the solar yes, panels? Up, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm asking if that doesn't happen. We're working pretty diligently on this one right now. Sorry, I'm still trying to get straight in. That's, 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 that's the best answer I can give you. Chance that, they, that you may have to do that, right? I mean, is the answer not that there is a chance that you may have to do that? There may be a chance. Remove the panels. If, it, if this does not, if this falls through, you said there's no other viable options. Is what I heard you say. Pay me, save me. Because there's no other. Because no one else wants to give you an easement. So you tell me there's no other options. So if it doesn't go. What happens? Back to truck something instead of all the money in or what? <laughs> that is a simple question. <laughs> We're going to continue working with the utility to get this approved. You've been doing that. I want, we had that conversation up there last year. Last fall. Last fall, last August. The first Thursday of last August, 16th. Here we are. Well, wouldn't it be it's smart to get a legal opinion if this is, it fits in the zoning before mm -hmm. we do anything? Yeah, I mean, I think that's. Yeah. So an example, a question about it. if I said, okay, put it on my property, I, I wouldn't think the town would allow me to have on my property four poles with this stuff on it. Well, there you, it's well, a it's utility easement. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so there's a, on the, I'm on giving the, you permission to do it, but I don't think the town would allow me, so what makes it? If, well, well uh, sure Derek, if you were on our side of the street, yeah. I'd love to. Unfortunately, <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah. But we're pretty on close the, to it, no, though. What I'm saying is, I don't think the town would allow that. I mean, on the Big Indian Reservation at the moment, there, yeah. there's a gas easement. This is a utility easement across a mm -hmm. private piece of property. Yeah, which, Derek. So this is not a solar array. Property. This is nothing. Yeah. It's a it's a it's a utility easement across a, a piece of property. Steve, you have a question? Yeah, I had a question. Um, uh, first, I'd, I'd like a copy of the, the contract as a public record. If somebody could email that to me with any changes. I'd like to understand what penalty terms are in the contract. I'd like to know who's paying for all these delays and why there's so much interest in these financial conditions. Because, you know, if the contract was signed a few years ago, all of these issues were addressed. They were addressed based on the design. I'm sure the contract has terms as to whether it's the town who's paying for the delays, whether the contractor is paying for the delays. I've heard any of that discussed here. I'd like to understand financially who's paying for all of these delays. And maybe that's motivating this issue with completion of construction. Because I agree with the other gentleman here, unless there is some reason to believe the construction will not be complete, this project should have been budgeted, funded, and the funding available for it when it was approved. And so the idea that there's not funding to finish something that's an aesthetic just doesn't make sense to me either. No, no, we never said there wasn't funding approved. Well, then the money's there. Why don't you finish the berm and make the neighbors happy? And, and anyway, the other point that I'm hearing here, which is a little concerning to me, 
is clearly this is not the design that went in front of the town boards because changes have been made. And as I stated earlier, I haven't seen you come back in front of those boards. And although I understand the utilities have a lot of leeway in regard to their system, they still have to go in front of boards as well for screening and for other issues. And I haven't seen any of this been vetted in the town at any board. And you know whether it's a transformer sitting on that piece of property, you know I was by there today. This is clearly next to a wetland resource area. All of these things need to be worked out and go to the appropriate boards. You've said you've been to all these boards. When you make changes, routine standard practice to go back. You can't make changes to designs and not go back to the approving boards. And whether it's the Board of Health, the Planning Board, the Conservation, no matter who it is, when you change that design in some substantive way have to go see that whether it's a condition of the approval or any other matter you have to go back and get approval of your change and you just don't seem to be doing that you seem to be doing a negotiation with the town's representative I assume that's you Michael who's negotiating this or is there a project manager for the town that hasn't been identified no, I appreciate you pointing out that we do have to go back to the boards I think as part of this communication if Michael's going to provide you with additional information or perhaps on your own you could research all the times we've been on the planning board docket to go and present I, you, I know you were there in the past. I'm talking about recently. No, 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 Steve. They, they so have been before the planning boards. They've had, they've went before the planning board with the design. The planning board has said no, this is not acceptable. Amoresco has gone back with different alternatives. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, Derek's been at those meetings. Others have been. At the, so, so then, meetings, so when you say we don't go to the boards, I'd like to. Yeah. So let's, mm -hmm. if we're going to have an honest discussion, let's have an honest discussion. Please identify so, when so this was in front of the boards. So, Joe. Yeah. So I'm. I'm a member of the planning board, and I'm not here <clears throat> representing the planning board, but you guys have come in front of us a number of times in the last six months, presented some things to us, we requested more information, <clears throat> and there was a scheduled date where you guys were going to come back with Eversource that got canceled, and it has not reappeared on the docket. So, right, yep. so I, as far as I'm concerned, there is some future meeting where you're going to come cool. again to the planning board. Eversource needs to complete their review process. When that review process is complete, we'll, we'll file for another, we'll get on the agenda for another meeting, and, and that's when that utility connection will sit in front of the planning board. And I thank you for, for clarifying that. I, I had watched that video. Yeah. Nick? Yeah, so now that there's going to be a pole mounted transformers across the street from my house, will they be noisy? Are they going to buzz? The AC to AC transformers? No. You can guarantee that? Does she have the answer, maybe? I, I, I'm not able to answer that. I mean, once it's reviewed, um, when they're at the planning board, they can answer that, but I'm not qualified to answer. I don't know what the design is. Do you have a sketch of what the design is? Your, uh, your transformer pole? How does that look? I'm just having a little visualizing this. Uh, I didn't bring a, I'm sorry. Um, I was told this is a status update meeting. I apologize for not being more prepared, but uh, um, this looks, it's a cylindrical mount. It's a piece of cylindrical equipment that's mounted on a utility pole. It is. There's, there's one is cylindrical that's mounted on a utility pole, and there's one that's more rectilinear, which is a recloser that's mounted on a separate pole. So just a regular height pole. These would be. They, these would be less than your on street. And this is your two to four poles. You're correct. Talking about? They might want to pick up pole in the beginning to take it up to move it from the the uh, uh, the, the conduit. To the recloser, then to the transformer, but so. And that would be the same height. Uh, maybe low, just a pickup pole, maybe lower. So just. Yeah, it'll it'll step up. Just to sketch it out. Uh, we it, it, we have. I just apologize for not having that with us tonight. Yeah. Okay. Um, yes. Yeah, um, I'm just concerned because we talk about transparency in this town, like there's no okay, And but this this deal, this behind the scenes with this neighbor, or whoever they are, um, it happened uh, off camera somewhere, and neighbors didn't even have a chance to say to that person, wait a minute, we don't like this idea. So where's the transparency? And it's supposed to be this town project. And quite honestly, some of the town projects are the least transparent. So I'm just very upset that, again, <coughs> it just seems not transparent. And John called the meeting. If John hadn't called the meeting, I don't even know if there would have been a meeting. Thank you. Can I, can I offer another suggestion? Uh, because I brought this up at our last Board of Health meeting 
when uh, Mr. Orem described to the Board of Health of what was going to be done for the gas mitigation. And I made the point to Mr. Orem, uh, DEP wants us to do the gas monitoring wells, and I think that's common sense that we need to do it. But I, I broached the question, it was my question, that if we're going to allow DEP to breach the cap, because to install these monitoring wells, we do have to uh, breach the cap to do it. So I said, well, we told Amoresco they couldn't put a telephone pole there. Is there a possible, and this is going, this is where I get frustrated that it didn't come back to us because I would have been having this conversation with your organization at a meeting. When DEP is out digging these wells, can DEP supervise the installation of a pole so it doesn't have to go in his front yard? And if the board agrees to it, that might be a solution. I, I'm not speaking for the board. I'm not giving any hypotheticals. What I'm running out is that maybe this could have been resolved by you coming back to us, is, is all that I'm pointing out. Because if we've got DEP out there, they know that they know this landfill better than anybody in this whole room. And if they sit there and say, yeah, Board of Health, you could put a pole there, that might be better than this gentleman's front yard. This, I'll take one for the team, though. I don't want it in front of anybody else's house. <laughs> well, but that's what. But I'm young and dumb. <laughs> it goes back to the good neighbor. Nobody wants a pole. Hold on, hold on, I think that that's all. That's all very honorable and stuff. But you guys can't even decide when you're going to have a meeting. Never mind. Joe, hold on a second, Johnny. Here, I'm just sitting here quietly, and, and and I'm thinking some of the questions that I had with respect to that was something that I was going to address later on. Seeing the scene that you brought it up. That was one of the things that was going to be a suggestion. If they're going to break the ground to put those gas meters in, then they'll be far below 25 feet anyway. Then why can't we go to the DEP and ask for that? And ask for that. That was a question that was going to be asked that I was going to bring it up at that, that last meeting. But so great lines like, are thinking alike. Yeah, well, yeah, but you know, unfortunately, these things come up and they don't have it. But I, I guess. My concern is with, with the folks that are living uh, in, in and around that area, and, and I, have a, I have a concern with the firm. And I understand it's all, it's all budget and stuff. MRSCO, it, to me anyway, it sounds like you're holding off on doing any work until you get the approval from Eversource on the project site development at, on the new potential uh, location at Big Indian uh, property, which is going to be that easement to put the poles in. Is that, is, that, is that a fair and accurate statement? Well, there's two things. One is coordinating with the other activities that the town is doing on site, because they're occurring in the same area. And then the other is playing out this process on the interconnections. Okay, so if it all works together and an Eversource gives their blessing to this project that you go through, and you have that, then I guess my question would be, if you, once that is completed, not the whole project, but once you get the okay from Eversource that they approve that, then why can't we do three things at one time instead of two things and try to get the people that have to look at that and get and get that uh, that fencing and the buttermen up at the same time as everything else being done? I mean, people that has been sitting there dormant for the last three. I'm sure people want the work and get the work done and get it done. So why not do the three projects at one time instead of two now and then one at the very end? I understand the safety aspect of it. <coughs> Move the fence back a little bit. You know, as you're going along, so you can take that safety fence and move it back. So that way you can get the berm and you can get the trees and everything. That'll make the folks on House Street happy. That'll probably stop making a lot of other people happy too, seeing that the project is actually being worked on again. But some of this work that you guys are going to be doing, people aren't really going to see it. Really not going to see it. So, and that, that's just that's just a comment that I want to throw out there. Whether it's good, bad, or indifferent, I just I just had to get it off my chest. I'm sorry. Mm. Yes, Rob. I, I still want to come back again to this underground stuff. Now, you say that that did not meet certain requirements. But what, what are requirements from Eversource? Why can, if you can bring a conduit of power from the center of the plane, why can't you bring a conduit of power all the way to Indian Reservation and do the work on Indian Reservation in an underground system instead of in the big, big poles? Who is, who is complaining there? What, who is against it? That that cannot be done. Eversource said that they couldn't do Eversource that. Eversource said that. What, what's what's the reason? I, I'm I'm confused because Eversource puts in underground cables to solar systems and other places. But this is not a big huge system. 
I don't, I, I, I just don't understand it. I don't I'm just telling you how it played out, Rob. That's all I'm saying. So, because they would solve the whole poll situation. I mean, you know, I understand your thing. I, I, I agree. I'd be looking at the Burma and say, wow, you know, we promised these people of Burma that no Burma was awful be going on for a year and all that. But, but this is a separate thing. You know, I don't know. We never discussed that. I have no idea how to fight this. Did you ever saw say no to that idea? Ever saw us wreck? Did you say no to that idea? She, she yeah, I, I'm sorry, I'm not involved in the project. I'm here just to well, you know, take some feedback. But if we, you know, if we, we had designs that were um, brought before us, and I want to say there was at least four designs, and you know they just um, you know weren't um, weren't approved. I don't have the details of that. Um, but again, you know, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not an engineer, and I'm going to guess that this isn't your simple connection, and that's why we have a whole group that makes up our interconnection. Um, you know, we, we too favor these kind of projects, and we would like to see them take place, but we need to do it in a safe, re reliable manner. So, um, you know, I don't have the details, but yeah, I'm hearing this. I will bring it back to the team. They have the uh, new redesign plan that they can review, and you know, let's hope it, it is a go. I mean, I, I hear that everybody wants to get this going, and um, and we certainly have been working very closely with uh, Amoresco, so um, I, I would think that they're they're tweaking it to the right design. So then your, then your personnel think it was worthy enough to come out here to back you up? Is that this happening? You taking notes? Um, it's because they got a redesign on July 11th and they haven't had a chance to review it so it would be second guessing a design that they haven't reviewed yet. It's not that, that, that I'm not supported, it's just that we didn't really have an update and that was um, explained. Um, the, uh, the, without doing the polls, I thought the design you originally had was they wouldn't let you do it because you had to go into the ground but now you're going to be off-site, why won't they allow you? Off-site waste landfill. So it's not on the landfill. Correct. So why won't they allow you to go in the ground now? Or did you submit a design for that? Well, they haven't reviewed it yet, Derek, I think is the point. So you're talking about the big off-site solution? Yeah, but you, you said it was going to be poles, but why couldn't you do the, well, the underground or the ground one there because it's not on the landfill? Did you present that, or are they just doing, or they just automatically just say you've got to do polls, and they didn't want to see anything else? It meets the design standards, so you know the, the poll is their preferred solution because in terms of the acts, and I don't want to speak for the utility, yeah. but some of the issues that come up there relative to their preferred solution involves uh, worker access to the site and the equipment, uh, worker safety, working in and around uh, in confined spaces, things of that nature. So a lot of it has to do with the preferred design and direction that they they want to see. Would there be an access road still in front of my house? Because the telephone poles are now going to be in front of the house? Uh, no, so there won't be. So you probably better than most can probably picture how this is going to be on that little corner uh, where the construction access road is. Uh, our plan, as presented, and you'll have to bear with me a little bit, Nick, to kind of picture this, is that property line is fairly wooded uh, next to the next to the access road, so in yep. front of your house. And as you know, when you leave the sidewalk, you step up two to four feet to get access to the big Indian uh, property. Off the yep, so access will be from the landfill side. Okay, so access, any sort of long-term maintenance and operation and construction access will be from the landfill side. The poles will be sited, our hope and intention is that the uh, house tree vegetation will remain, so the trees in front of your house will remain because we don't need a pole immediately at that location. The poles can be sited a little bit further back to pick up, um, pick up the uh, the inverter, the cable from the inverter, and that those trees remain along house tree. Uh, and then all you have is just the wire that comes out to, that we need to have to the final connection pole that's actually on the street. Sure, order. but one my, my question is, it's going to be a park across the street, correct, and not an access road. Chris, at that far, at that far side, of Nick's house, because again, the construction access to the outside, right, Chris? <clears throat> yeah. So right now, you can, see, you can actually see it on that drawing. Um, there is going to be a on that left side. There is going to be an access for it. It's not going to be as wide as, as the one. Look, well, I, I get everything from get the house. Mm -hmm. The trifecta. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got to take a deduction. Oh, let me erase that. Yeah. <laughs> 
All right, thank you. <laughs> Any other questions? Any other comments? How's it going? Yeah, Mike. Just on the on the berm itself. So the berm, how high? How tall is the berm going to be? Six feet. So it's six feet, and then you're going to put plantings in the berm itself. Yes. Correct. Um, what type of what? what uh, it's a mix of uh, vegetation. Uh, off the top of my head, I want to say that the uh, minimum install height uh, per planning board requirement is six feet with a growth uh, over five years to a 10 year maturity height. So you're talking 10 feet of uh, dense vegetative material uh, above the six foot berm. So you have a, you know, in the 16 foot range, uh, we've got a mix of uh, conifers and deciduous trees, and then uh, some low plantings and grass on the berm itself. That we have a, a maintenance uh, a requirement as well for the term of that contract. And what is the term? What, when does the contract expire? Twenty years. Twenty years. It's a twenty-year PPA with. Uh, oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, because in the past we've had, we've had issues with berms, with plantings where the, the trees will die and it takes a while. To that, that was a, a focus of the planning board, both of the shape, design, and orientation of the, of the and as well as the vegetative material. Yeah. yeah, you might need a drip line or something. Some water to the trees. Is that 20 years from the completion of the project or 20 years from when the contract was signed? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> You're not no, no, it's, it's not an argument. It's just a. Because it's been a couple of years, so I mean, are we two years into a 20 year contract or does the contract start upon completion? It's, it, it's one, it, the inter interconnection of the, of the system. The Thank you. Thank you. Can I ask whether the um, projected energy credits, i.e. earnings for Ashland, are still the same on this project? And how much is that? So, oh, Michael, but they're still the same. They haven't changed since the town meeting. Correct. So, as you know, that this is part of is bearing the cost of the cost of electricity in the town of Ashland, Ashland hasn't changed one bit from the PPA price that we negotiated. We're bearing right. all the costs and that the projected savings over the term of the contract. Uh, and how much money is that? Uh, is for, the three, for the three projects, so you know that we've developed a project at the middle school, the high school, and then this one. So those are three renewable projects in addition to the efficiency work. Uh, the term savings for those three projects were over $5 million. Okay, I would love to know the house street earnings um, broken out. And then my other question is, how much is it costing Ashland to, to do the mitigation loans? Um, 185,000. Okay. Oh, we would have had to do that with that. what the Howe Street project was supposed to earn? It was very big. It was very big. It kept on going down. It was, yeah. it was like a million dollars over 20 years or something like that. Right. It was more like 2.5. Yeah, it was, was $220,000 a year for yeah, so the, yeah, so the, 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 the house right. landfill is the largest array of the three, and the, the bulk of the savings are coming from the, the landfill array. Are we getting cash, or is this the number of those savings? It's a credit, yeah. It's a credit. So the, we're not actually getting cash. No. There's no money. Well, we, we are in the form of a pilot agreement, but that's a portion of the, of the total financial. Okay, agreement. so there's no people. I think people really thought they were actually uh, I have one more question. Uh, how much are they, are you paying the big Indian people? Or are they doing it? Don't pay them. How much is that going to pay? Like, how much are you paying the Are you asking me? Julie? Well, whoever signed the agreement with the big Indian people. Well, we don't have an agreement with big Indian. That, okay, that's well, a, that's an you must have discussed money. And... I'm just curious. What you're paying the big Indian people and who's going to pay for the Big Indian Reservation is going to have a utility easement with, with Eversource. Right, and they're doing it for free. Just come on our land, it's free. I'm just curious. Is it free? Or are, they, are you getting a monetary, to use that word, monetizing the land for the Big Indian people? We've asked if, we asked if this was a possibility for them. We presented the utility easement agreement for their review. Yeah. That's the extent of our discussions. Okay, but you probably go back to pay for that. Yeah. Okay. It's it's nice you presented the agreement to them. It would have been nicer to present it to some of these neighbors too. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Hey, you're starting up again in August, right? Next work. That's uh, when we. Yeah, that's when we start the gas uh, permeation wells. Okay, if, and after that, is there anything else that's going to be going on from that to the beginning of fall? Is there work in progress that they're going to be going on at all? It's nothing that the town will be doing. Is there going to be a work group on site working in August, September? And what are they going to be doing if they're concerned? That's what I'm asking you at Adverse Records. Um, there's got to be somebody up there to do that gas, and there's got to be a representative at least up there to make sure that they're taking notes. Yes or no? Yeah, our consultant will be uh, up there monitoring. Yes. Your consultant and amateur people, are you going to be there with that consultant? Well, we've already been in touch with them. We've coordinated construction activities where we've, we've offered to allow them to stage the construction materials and construction equipment within the, the uh, construction fencing. So we've tried to be accommodating to, to their needs. Um, and that should there be, uh, there's a little bit of close work in and around some of the array. So we may have a construction personnel on site at that time just to, to supervise. But again, it, it's not under our direction. It's just We just may be there to, to observe. Working is, around our equipment. Is there going to be more ground, solar base working around themselves in the summer? Any more work on site? The array is all set. The balance of the construction activity is going to be the interconnection, and then the, and then following the uh, environmental remediation, then the the balance that will be around the berm and the the fencing to complete the project. And when is completion date? That question's been asked a, a number of times. I've stated some number of times we, our intention, and I believe the path forward is going to play out this summer into the fall. But there's no certain month, day, and time. Just in case people say it's still going on, and they gave a certain date, it went past it, what happened? Is there a um, public process for the abutters to be aware of the plan from Eversource? You said that they received it on July 11th, and it's still under review. Is there any way for abutters to submit uh, questions, comments for that review process? Is that a no? No. No. It's, it's something that our engineers, uh, you know, determine. And if there are, uh, if there's equipment owned or maintained by EverSource um, that requires, you know, any um, public you know, hearing for brand of location, we would in fact do that. Uh, again, I don't know the plan, so right. I, I would be second guessing. Um, um, but I mean, you know, if there's anything that we would have to do to follow, you know, whatever the regulations, um, you know, are set by the town or, you know, within the travel way or not the public way, um, we would in fact have to go in front of the town for permission. No, I understand that, but we've got a room full of abutters here tonight. Right. Is there I, any way that they can submit their questions to Eversource or their comments or concerns? Um, I'm sorry to, that I don't have that answer for you. Um, this interconnection is not something that I regularly do. Um, I was, you know, basically, um, you know, I, I mean, I'll take that back. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think that it's part of the process, I, I, but I'm not sure. Uh, but I can certainly just bring that back to the team that is reviewing it. Um, I do know that there, I believe, is another at least field meeting. Um, so I would think that we would have, uh, you know, the town uh, to, to let the town officials know that we would be doing that along with Amoresco for discussion. Um, so that is something that I can bring back as well. Let's say the Eversource may not have a project email for progress reports that our brothers can get their own answers back on? No, I think that the review is really an engineering review, so I don't think that it requires, um, you know, that of a, a public opinion. It's either something that can be done reliability and safe, or it cannot be. Um, I, I think that that's the review. Uh, but again, I'll take back that concern, and I will let the folks know, um, those that are reviewing it, if there's something that can be offered to you, the residents, for part of the review, fine, but I just don't think that that's a step that's typically done, but again, um, it's not something that I do on a regular basis. And Amoresco, same question. Is there an email that the, about anybody interesting, say, can you give us a progress 
respond back through email and tell them what's going on so they can know without waiting. Can you give them a progress at any time that you can say something in public to them and through email? Well, I'll tell you what, we'll, uh, we'll disclose any sort of positive milestones to the, the butters and to the town, you know, to, to make them aware of, the, of next milestones in this process. But I think what I heard tonight, that if it does require any, any additional reviews by the town, that is something that's done, you know, at a public meeting. Yeah, that would be done at a public Absolutely. meeting. Absolutely. Like a planning board, planning board specifically. Mr. Herbert, could I just ask a question about, uh, and maybe Mr. Small could uh, elaborate it more. There's a sidewalk going on up there as mm -hmm. well, too. Maybe, uh, Doug, I hate to put you on the spot, but a little update on that. Um, obviously, this is a sensitive area. Um, it's a landfill, so uh, right now we're in phase one. As you know, there are sidewalks out there that were put in place, and they're really nothing, nothing to brag about. But anyways, we're in phase one right now where the town has hired an engineer uh, to design and to survey that area to, to see if, if we can actually, if this is actually a, a doable uh, project. Uh, there are many utility poles in the way. One of my big concerns is the drainage up there. Um, so there are many issues that need to be addressed. So it's, it's early, it's phase one, um, and the engineering is underway right now in the survey. That's where we're at. I, I don't know when, I don't know when we'll, we're gonna reach phase two, but right now we're going in to identify the issues and you know, obviously there's some issues on, in House Street with the manholes mm -hmm. and the, so for me to say, Oh, piece of cake! Well, you know we're going to have sidewalks in there in three months. Is, would be a huge mistake. Cause would it be asphalt or the concrete? It'd be asphalt, and we haven't. Right. It most likely for the sake of cost, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, it would probably. We haven't gotten as far as whether it's going to be a, a asphalt berm or a, a granite, so or concrete. But Nick, uh, my wife would like to know if you guys are going to extend it down to the Indian Brook neighborhood. That's the plan. Okay, the design is supposed to go all the way down to the Maybe, maybe one thing we can do is with the uh, planning board meeting. That uh, what we could do is I don't think it's required to send out a butter notifications for that planning board hearing, but maybe that's something that we can do. Similar to what was done with this meeting, we can send out a butter notifications. That way, people would have a sense of, of what's going on and when when that's going to happen. All right. Well, I appreciate everybody coming tonight and, and asking questions, and um, I do appreciate your patience. I know uh, all of you that are abutting this property have had to live with uh, quite a bit of chaos over the last last couple of years. So, you know, appreciate your patience. I believe you know Jim has laid out again a path forward. Um, certainly not the most ideal path for uh, everybody involved. That's for sure. But. Um, Hopefully it's something that we can get accomplished um, here in the near future and mainly that that berm get built. I think that's what uh, really helped sell this project was the fact that we could mitigate the impact to, the, to those people directly across the street and in the surrounding neighborhood and uh, something that uh, we should be able to get accomplished. Okay, so thank you.